Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, Tuesday morning. Bless you guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm running this morning. Running, running, running. I'm a little bit late. Ethel in Memphis, good morning. Vincennes, Indiana, good morning. Connecticut is here. Yukon, Husky Nation. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got me running this morning. <laughs> Detroit, Michigan, good morning. D.C., the center of American government. Columbia, South Carolina, good morning. Having a green smoothie. Ooh. God bless you with that. Good word at 7 a.m.? Okay, we'll try to expand it here, okay? Monica in Mississippi, good morning. 7 a.m., I've been doing a conference call with our Cornerstone people. I got late with that this morning. That's That kind of set me behind. Something happened with my phone, and I had to dial out of the call and then dial back into the call, start all over again. It's like, oh, uh, it's cold in Memphis, 35. Wow. That is cold for Memphis. Early in good morning. Good morning, good morning. Are we ready? Vaughn Hamilton, Houston, Texas. Yeah, high energy, let's go. Yeah, 35 is a heat wave in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bolingbrook is here, good morning. Good morning, Macon, Macon, Georgia. Good morning. Thank you for all the hearts. I appreciate it. Those hearts are flowing. Thank you. Every time you tap the screen, you release a heart. Thank you so much. Got the hot green tea going. I had my green tea this morning. Homewood, Illinois. Good morning. The locals are here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tuesday. We're off to a good start this morning. God is good. He's still on the throne. Got some good things happening. So we're excited about what's going on. I hope you're having a, a good start of the day and the day will go well for you. I have a funeral today that I'll be participating in. So that's going to take a big portion of my day. Uh, but it's just something what we have to do from time to time, you know, something that we have to do. So today... <clears throat> Um, oh, well, let me first remind you, those of you in the area, and especially Cornerstone people, we have our Cornerstone Institute tomorrow night, Wednesday night, at 7 p.m., so we want to see you be, be a part of our classes. Tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Um, I, I want to focus on this woman that's mentioned in Luke chapter 13. I, I, I've been looking at this, this woman and this, this story out of the ministry of Jesus, and uh, I've become convinced that, that this is... Um, something important that we're supposed to grasp in this season that we're in. Something that we're supposed to grasp for the church, for the body of Christ, for the people of God. And it's a story about this woman that was bent over. Uh, the scripture says she had a spirit of infirmity, bent over for 18 years. Now, Jesus said she was a daughter of Abraham, which means she was a woman of covenant. She was in the synagogue, so we would call her a church lady. She was involved with the church, in the synagogue, a daughter of Abraham, a covenant woman, had a covenant with God, and yet she's been bent over, in this bent over condition, for 18 years. Scripture says she could not raise herself up. She couldn't raise herself up. She'd been in this bent over condition, looking down at the ground, looking at the earth, looking at an earthly perspective. She had been like that for 18 years. And Jesus said she was bound by the power of Satan, bound, bound by the power of Satan. So Jesus calls her to come to him. Then he looses her from the spirit of infirmity. That's where we get woman thou art loosed. He looses her from the spirit of infirmity. He lays hands on her and she is healed by the power of God. She stands up straight and now she's able to lift up her head and she's able to look up. She has a new perspective. And I believe somewhere or another, that's exactly what's happening with so many of us in the body of Christ right now. 
We have been bent over for years and years, 18 years in this woman's case, 18 years living in this bent over condition, seeing things only from an earthly perspective. Uh, the mundane view of life, what we can see, what we can touch, the five senses, living our lives by all of that. Responding to situations, responding to relationships, responding to issues in life based on our crippled view of things from being in a bent over condition. Our emotions have been bent over. Our, our mindset has been bent over. The way we see things has been bent over. The way we respond to people has been bent over. Spirit of infirmity, bound by Satan for 18 years, and we need to be set free. The Lord wants to take us to that ascended place, to the higher place. He wants to take us to that place that is elevated. And so Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6 Paul says that God has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're sitting in heavenly places. We're sitting in the spiritual realm. We are positioned in an elevated place in Christ Jesus. So we begin to realize that we are not human beings trying to live a spiritual experience, but we are spirit beings living life on earth from God's perspective, living life from an elevated view, from the ascended viewpoint of being seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now that, that, that adjustment is going to require that we move through a process of change. If you want to be something then you must think it. And if you don't think it, you won't see it. And if you don't see it, you won't speak it. And if you don't speak it, you won't obtain it. And this whole process is happening by the power of faith. So God is walking us through this process and he's saying, come up here. And I will show you things to come, Revelation 4.1. Come up here, and I'm going to expand your capacity to see. Come up here, and you're going to see things differently than you've ever seen them before. So I, I want to share with you today a blessing that Melchizedek gave to Abram. It's found in Genesis chapter 14, verses 19 and 20. This is where Abram is returning from a battle where he rescued his nephew Lot, and he's met by this man. This is kind of a strange, unique description in the Bible. He is the king of Salem. He's a man without father or mother, a man with seemingly eternal origins. Melchizedek, Jesus comes from the priesthood of Melchizedek. Jesus did not come from the Levitical priesthood. He came from the, the priesthood of Melchizedek. And so here we see Melchizedek. I'm, I'm going to get sidetracked. So let's, let's get on this blessing. We see Melchizedek speaking into the life of Abram. And he says, Blessed be Abram of God most high. Mark those words. God most high. Possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high. There it is again who has delivered your enemies into your hands. Now, there's a three-part blessing in that scripture. And this three-part blessing gives us a new viewpoint. First of all is the blessing of elevation. Blessed be Abram of God Most High. This God Most High, this elevated God, is blessing you, Abraham. He's blessing you. So if God is elevated and we are in relationship with him, then that means that we are also in an elevated position. We are not from, from beneath, we are from above. Our citizenship is not in the earth, our citizenship is in heaven. So we are seeing things from an elevated perspective, an elevated view. And this even gives us a new viewpoint on our failures and on our weaknesses. A new viewpoint on how you view when you fell, when you failed, when you messed up, when you made a mistake. A new view on what you consider to be your weaknesses. We begin to see those things like God sees them. 
And so God is going to elevate you in authority for the sake of increasing your influence so that you are empowered to extend his kingdom into all the diverse sectors of the culture. God wants to do that in your life. The elevated place, the blessing of elevation. Then secondly is the blessing of possession. That's the second blessing here. The blessing of possession. God is the possessor of heaven and earth. So he's giving us all the resources we need, both spiritual, heaven, and natural, earth. We have spiritual resources, we have natural resources. All of that is available to us by the blessing of possession. When we embrace our God-given assignment, his favor is released to draw all of the necessary resources, necess all, all that we need. It's all coming toward us so that we can fulfill our assignment. This blessing of possession gives us a new viewpoint on God's favor. A new viewpoint on God's favor. Favor is not just so we can feel good, but favor is attracting resources so we can finish our assignment. And then thirdly, there is the blessing of dominion. The blessing of dominion. Melchizedek says to Abram, this God most high has delivered all your enemies into your hand. It's a blessing of dominion. For us New Testament saints, we say he's not just in our hand, but the enemy is under our feet. The enemy is under our feet. So <clears throat> we have a new viewpoint on our enemies. We're, we're not just struggling and fighting and worrying and sweating it out, trying to get the victory. We already have the victory. You already have victory in your life. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to win it. You don't have to fight for it. It's already there. It's already there. The victory belongs to you. Step into it by faith. Live in that victory. Now there's going to be an enemy that tries to hinder that, stop that. Absolutely, of course. You're going to have demonic oppression, demonic resistance. You're going to have all of that. But realize today, my friend, that you have the victory. You have it. You don't have to sweat it. You don't have to struggle for it. It is yours in Jesus' name. You have the victory. So, we have this three-part blessing, the blessing of elevation, the blessing of possession, the blessing of dominion. All of this belongs to us in Christ Jesus. It is part of the ascended life. We're living life from above and not from beneath. We're seeing things from God's view, from God's perspective, and not limited to a humanistic viewpoint. Are you hearing me today? That even applies to what goes on around us. It applies to what goes on in our land. I was telling our church Sunday that this whole presidential thing is to be seen from God's point of view. You know, Obama in the White House, Trump in the White House, Hillary in the White House. Who's going to be in the White House? And, and we, we tend to see those things from an earthly perspective from a Democratic or Republican perspective, from a black or white perspective, from a, a male or female perspective. But God is saying, come up here. Come up here. Come up higher. Come to the ascended place, and I will show you a new view. I will give you a new, fresh perspective. And instead of seeing a human being sitting in the Oval Office, you'll begin to see the hand of God coming down on the White House. And you begin to see what God has in store for the president, no matter who that is, and what God has in place for the White House and what God has in store for the entire nation. Can we see it from the ascended viewpoint, from heavenly places instead of from the earth realm? All right? You're blessed with elevation, you're blessed with possession, and you're blessed with dominion. Melchizedek's blessing to Abraham is your blessing as well. So I want you to be encouraged today, man. I want you to, I want you to just be blessed, encouraged, and live from the ascended place. Live from the ascended place and know that God is with you in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Listen, it's a great day to be alive. God is still on the throne. Amen. <laughs> He's still on the throne. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 24 elders are still seated around the throne on their 24 thrones. The four living creatures who are full of eyes are still around the throne. The intelligence of God, the creativity of God, the wisdom of God, the innovation of God is being released into your life today. You have open doors in front of you. Opportunities are presenting themselves. You have divine connections, divine resources. You have favor with God and man, which is attracting those resources so you can finish your assignment. It's all happening in your life today. And wherever there is sickness, wherever there is disease, wherever there is weakness, right now, in the name of Jesus, we break its power. And I declare the healing virtue of Jesus Christ to be manifested in your body right now. Right now, I speak to double-mindedness, and I command you to come to an end now. You who are the people of God will not be double-minded. You will not live in confusion. You will not live in doubt and unbelief. If you can believe, all things are possible. It's a great day for you. It's a day of strength, a day of power, a day of overcoming victory. It's a day of authority. It's a day of living in dominion, living like you already have the victory because you realize that you really do. You really do have the victory. You're living life now in January from next December's perspective. Looking back and seeing everything that God has done. So you're living now as if the year is already finished and the blessing of God for 2017 has already been released into your life. Every battle has already been won. All the resources you need between now and December have already been granted to you. All the relationships you need between now and December are already in your life. You live it by faith. See it as if it's already done. Wow, it's powerful. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for being on with me. Have a wonderful day. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll talk to you soon.